Chapter 60. Jason. They found Leo at the top of the city fortifications. He was sitting at an open-air cafe, overlooking the sea, drinking a cup of coffee and dressed in... Wow. Time warp. Leo's outfit was identical to the one he'd worn the day they first arrived at Camp Half-Blood. Jeans, a white shirt, and an old army jacket. Except that jacket had burned up months ago. Piper nearly knocked him out of his chair with a hug. Leo, Cuds, where have you been? Valdez, Coach Hedge grinned. Then he seemed to remember he had a rep reputation to protect, and he forced a scowl. You ever disappear like that again, you little punk? I'll knock you into next month. Frank patted Leo on the back so hard it made him wince. Even Nico shook his hand. Hazel kissed Leo on the cheek. We thought you were dead. Leo mustered a faint smile. Hey, guys. Nah, nah. I'm good. Jason could tell he wasn't good. Leo wouldn't meet their eyes. His hands were perfectly still on the table. Leo's hands were never still. All the nervous energy had drained right out of him, replaced by a kind of wistful sadness. Jason wondered why his expression seemed familiar. Then he realized Nico D'Angelo had looked the same way after facing Cupid in the ruins of Salona. Leo was heartsick. As the others grabbed chairs from the nearby tables, Jason leaned in and squeezed his friend's shoulder. Hey man, he said, what happened? Leo's eyes swept around the group. The message was clear. Not here, not in front of everyone. I got marooned, Leo said. Long story. How about you guys? What happened with Keone? Coach Hedge snorted. What happened? Piper happened. I'm telling you, this girl has skills. Coach, Piper protested. Hedge began retelling the story, but in his version, Piper was a kung fu assassin and there were a lot more Boreats. As the coach talked, Jason studied Leo with concern. This cafe had a perfect view of the harbor. Leo must have seen the Argo 2 sail in, yet he sat here drinking coffee, which he didn't even like, waiting for them to find him. That wasn't like Leo at all. The ship was the most important thing in his life. When he saw it coming to rescue him, Leo should have run down to the docks, whooping at the top of his lungs. Coach Hedge was just describing how Piper had defeated Keone with a roundhouse kick when Piper interrupted. Coach, she said, it didn't happen like that at all. I couldn't have done anything without Festus. Leo raised his eyebrows. But Festus was deactivated. Um, about that, Piper said. I sort of woke him up. Piper explained her version of events, how she'd rebooted the metal dragon with charm speak. Leo tapped his fingers on the table, like some of his old energy was coming back. Shouldn't be possible, he murmured. Unless the upgrades let him respond to voice commands. But if he's permanently activated, that means the navigation system and the crystal. Crystal? Jason asked. Leo flinched. Um, nothing. Anyway, what happened after the wind bomb went off? Hazel took up the story. A waitress came over and offered them menus. In no time, they were chowing down on sandwiches and sodas, enjoying the sunny day, almost like a group of regular teenagers. Frank grabbed a tourist brochure stuck under the napkin dispenser. He began to read it. Piper patted Leo's arms, like she couldn't believe he was really here. Nico stood at the edge of the group, eyeing the passing pedestrians as if they might be enemies. Coach Hedge munched on the salt and pepper shakers. Despite the happy reunion, everybody seemed more subdued than usual, like they were picking up on Leo's mood. Jason had never really considered how important Leo's sense of humor was to the group. Even when things were super serious, they could always depend on Leo to lighten things up. Now it felt like the whole team had dropped anchor. So then Jason harnessed the venti, Hazel finished. And here we are. Leah whistled. Hot air horses. Dang, Jason. So basically you held a bunch of gas together all the way to Malta and then you let it loose. Jason frowned. You know, it doesn't sound so heroic when you put it that way. Yeah, well, I'm an expert on hot air. I'm still wondering why Malta. I just kind of ended up here on the raft, but that was that a random thing, or maybe because of this? Frank tapped his brochure. Says here, Malta was where Calypso lived. A pint of blood drained from Leo's face. Well, what now? Frank shrugged. According to this, her original home was an island called Gozo, just north of here. Calypso's a Greek myth thingy, right? Ah, a Greek myth thingy! Coach Hedge rubbed his hands together. Maybe we get to fight her. Do we get to fight her? Because I'm ready. No, Leo murmured. No, we don't have to fight our coach. Piper frowned. 
Leo, what's wrong? You look... Nothing's wrong. Leo shot to his feet. Hey, we should get going. <laughs> We've got work to do. But where did you go? Hazel asked. Where did you get these clothes? How? Jeez, ladies, Leo said. I appreciate the concern, but I don't need two extra moms. Piper smiled uncertainly. Okay, but ships to fix, Leo said. Festus to check. Earth goddesses to punch in the face. What are we waiting for? Leo's back. He spread his arms and grinned. He was making a brave attempt, but Jason could see the sadness lingering in his eyes. Something had happened to him. Something to do with Calypso. Jason tried to remember the story about her. She was a sorceress of some sort, maybe like Medea or Cersei. But if Leo had escaped from an evil sorceress's lair, why did he seem so sad? Jason would have to talk to him later, make sure his buddy was okay. For now, Leo clearly didn't want to be interrogated. Jason got up and clapped him on the shoulder. Leo's right. We should get going. Everybody took the cue. They started wrapping up their food and finishing their drinks. Suddenly, Hazel gasped. Guys. She pointed to the northeast horizon. At first, Jason saw nothing but the sea. Then a streak of darkness shot into the air like black lightning, as if pure night had torn through the daytime. I don't see anything, Coach Hedge grumbled. Me neither, Piper said. Jason scanned his friends' faces. Most of them just looked confused. Nico was the only other one to have seemed to notice the black lightning. That can't be, Nico muttered. Greece is hundreds of miles away. The darkness flashed again, momentarily leaching the color from the horizon. You think it's a pyrus? Jason's whole skeleton tingled, the way he felt when he got hit by a thousand volts. He didn't know why he could see the dark flashes. He wasn't a child of the underworld, but it gave him a very bad feeling. Nico nodded. The house of Hades is open for business. A few seconds later, a rumbling sound washed over them like distant artillery. It's begun, Hazel said. What has? Leo asked. When the next flash happened, Hazel's gold eyes darkened like foil and fire. Gaia's final push, she said. The doors of death are working overtime. Her forces are entering the mortal world en masse. We'll never make it, Nico said. By the time we arrive, there'll be too many monsters to fight. Jason set his jaw. We'll defeat them, and we'll make it there fast. We've got Leo back. He'll give us the speed we need. He turned to his friend. Or is that just hot air? Leo managed a crooked grin. His eyes seemed to say, thanks. Time to fly, boys and girls, he said. Uncle Leo's still got a few tricks up his sleeve.